Shaping is absolutely key to your career as a nail technician because you don't know what clients are gonna want. Greg's gonna get into Almanetto, pretty damn good at it, right now. I'm going to show you guys how you're going to be able to execute the Almanetto shape with ease. You're gonna be able to follow these easy steps so that your clients have the hottest looking hands around. So what I'm going to do is we're gonna prepare the nail for application. It's really important that we set our electric file at 3000 RPMs so that we're gonna be able to remove shine from the natural nail gently. What I like to do is I like to get it into an overgrip position and what this is going to allow me to do is start from one side all the way around. And then again, once I'm done removing shine around the perimeter of the nail, this is going to be really, really easy for me to feather away the shine from one corner to the next. Once I am done removing shine, I'm going to use swipe to cleanse the surface of the nail. What this is going to do, it's gonna remove oils and contaminants from the surface of the nail and prepare it for protein bond application. I'm going to apply protein bond from cuticle to free edge. Remember, you're gonna to apply it to all 10 fingers. Once you're done applying it to all 10 fingers, apply one more coat, two coats for incredible adhesion. Now, the way I'm gonna break this down is it's going to be in two to three steps. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna show you guys how to create free edge first. Then we're gonna start from the cuticle area and we're going to build the structure from cuticle to free edge. And then if there is any flat spots, we're gonna be able to tame those flat spots with the right size pearl. Now, what I like to do, right, is I like to get my form and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-pinch. And since we're going to be building a shorter stiletto nail, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch it all the way down, right to here. All right, so what this is going to do is it's going to take the length away from the form and it's gonna give me a guide to work from. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place that underneath her nail and you see my finger right here. I use my finger to push up and what this is going to do is stabilize it so that it's going to be tight right here under the center of her free edge. I'm going to use cover pink to build this shape. So what I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to use the right size pearl. And again, we're doing a short almond shape stiletto. It's kind of a hybrid type of like shape. So what I like to do is I like to build the free edge first. And the reason why I like to do that is it gives me the perfect guide to work off of. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna submerge my brush. I'm going to get a nice even pearl, not too big. I'm gonna dab the excess off. And then what I'm going to do is when I set it right on the form, remember, I'm not gonna go past this point. So I'm gonna use the body of my brush to walk it right up to her corners. And you can see how I'm keeping it tight on this side. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposing side, walking it from the top all the way to her corner. And then again, you know, since I pinched it all the way to this point, this is a perfect guide for me to just bring it right up to the edge. And you can see again the length, since the form was pinched all the way, you're not gonna get past that point. Okay. Now, what I wanna be able to do next, once I actually have the shape established, I'm gonna start my next pearl at the cuticle area. I'm gonna hold the finger down at an angle. And what I wanna be able to do is, I'm going to get a pearl large enough, right? And wet enough so that when I set it right to the cuticle area, everything is going to run really, really well around the perimeter of her nail. You're gonna notice that I'm working the tip around the perimeter. And then as soon as it gets down to this point, I like to brush it from the sides 
I'm going to brush it from the sides and it keeps it full all the way around the perimeter of the nail. I'm not gonna pull it off. I just wanna be able to hold the shape. I wanna be able to hold the body into place and we're going to let this set. I'm not worried about bringing everything to the very, very front. I'm going to allow everything to settle so that it's tight all the way around the perimeter and I have enough volume at the edges so that when I pinch the nail or when I file, I have room to do that. I can check the side profile. Um, this is going to give me a good idea where I'm going to have to add once I'm done. I have one small bead that I need to add right here to the tip to make sure that it blends in perfect. Again, I'm gonna take the tip of my brush. I'm just going to touch it. And then what I wanna be able to do is I'm gonna take my brush backwards and you're gonna notice that I set it right into the area that I need it and I blend it back into the body of the nail. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the body of my brush and all I'm going to do is walk it so that it blends in flush to the existing product that I sculpted out. I can use the body of the brush all the way to the edge and what this is going to do, it's going to act as a great filler. I could use the tip of my brush to blend back if I need to. All right. I want to be able to check the nail from all angles. If there's any flat spots I need to add to, I could take one more small bead, I can add it to the area that I need, and then again, I'm not going to brush it away. Notice that when I set it down, I literally brushed it from the front, allowing it to all sit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to allow the product to dry, and this is going to get it ready for us to file it into the perfect almond shape. So what I wanna be able to do, around the three to four minute mark, I'm just going to make sure that I pinch right here at our side walls. You can see how I actually have the magic wand set up. It's at an angle, right? I don't have it straight on. I have it at an angle so that I can pinch the sides. Then I wanna be able to feel with my fingers as well to make sure that I have enough curve all the way to the front. You have about a three and a half to four minute I'd say window for you to be able to pinch it. Um, if you get your hand inside a lamp, the warmth of the lamp is probably gonna take less than two minutes. So you have to be able to time it well uh, for you to be able to pinch it into the perfect shape. Let's go ahead and remove this form and get ready to file this into perfection. Just remember to take the edges off the file before you start, that way you don't cut your client. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get it to a nice point. So since it is an almond shaped nail, I don't want straight edges. I want to round my edges all the way down to a point. We want to be able to maintain an almond shape, right? An almond shape. I don't want straight edges like a stiletto. It's an almanetto. It has a really, really tight point and Again, the edges are rounded towards the tip, okay? So once I have that dead even on both sides, what I wanna be able to do is turn my customer's hand to the side, and I'm gonna get it right here. You can see that the low point is right here. I'm going to get my file, and I just want to be gentle as I file it nice and even. And again, the lower arch is going to come it, it almost swivels all the way up to the tip, right, at a slight um, curve. Um, as long as it's coming out of the sidewall nice and even here all the way to the tip, that is what matters. You're going to notice if I line my file at the lowest point, okay, and watch. If I file and I continue to file until my hand file reaches, so I, I want to be able to get a connection so that it reaches perfection from her lower arch all the way out to the tip. And then as I'm looking down the barrel of the nail, one of the things I wanna be able to see is, you can see how well shaped it is because it's flat all the way out to the very, very tip. Once I actually have the sidewall's lower arch shaped out, I'm gonna be able to use my electric file and get the bulk off of the body, and this is gonna set me up for the least amount of hand filing necessary to make it look perfect. I'm going to use the new tornado bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set the RPMs around 12,000. 
And what I want to be able to do, again, as you can see from the side profile, I don't really have that much to file. So again, gentle through the upper arch, all the way down, right? So I could build nice shape through there. If I'm looking down the barrel of the body right here, you're gonna notice if I'm filing in one direction, I'm using the base to come all the way through. As I file through zone two, I'm gonna reach zone one and I'm gonna file all the way through and you can see my C curve is going to be nice and even from side to side. If I'm going around the cuticle area, you're going to notice one direction, one direction all the way through. And what this is going to do, it's going to allow me to take down the excess bulk so that I don't have to do that much hand filing. One of the things, uh, general rule of thumb is I like to take my hand file and go around the cuticle area to make sure that I have zero ledges. And I don't have to be aggressive. I could be very, very gentle. And again, getting it nice and tight, nice and flush so that it looks like part of the nail is really, really important. Then all I have to do is use my hand file to follow in one direction. Notice how I'm coming down, down the sides, right? Down the sides, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side so that my file lines, they're not straight down, they're like this, right? I'm working down towards the tip. That's really, really important. Okay, last but not least, what we wanna be able to do we're going to look down the client profile. I'm gonna take my hand file. I like to set it onto the surface. And what this is going to do, filing from side to side over the top, it's going to make it even on both sides so that you have an absolutely well filed and perfect structure. After I dust the surface off, one of the things I like to do is take a little bit of protein bond around the edges through the surface and what this is going to do, it's gonna anchor the top coat around the edges and make sure that you do not get any chipping from your top gel. Okay, after we apply the top, we're gonna to get inside the light, we're gonna cure that for 60 seconds and we are done.